Greetings, everybody. Brother Goodwin here, Dr. Charles Hiltavittle there, and welcome to everybody listening via the radio. And, uh, and those of you that are watching here on YouTube, we appreciate every one of you. And, uh, Doc, we did, a, uh, we did a show about what's coming in 2024. Mm -hmm. And isn't it interesting, at 2 o'clock in the morning Eastern time, <laughs> the very beginning of 2024, yeah. a 7-5 earthquake hits Japan. Yes. God's telling us, okay, this, this is, things are ramping yep. up. So one of, the, one of the signs that the Lord gave that's recorded in both Matthew and Luke. Yeah, and I was going to go to Matthew 24, maybe we will later, but about, about the earthquakes mm -hmm. and, I mean, just, it's, you know, we talk, we talk about birth pains and, and those yep. seems to be, things are getting worse every they year, are. it seems like. But let me read a verse that, that, I, that I want the folks to get here. Romans chapter 8, verse 22 and verse 23. And folks hear us quote this all the time. Uh, I don't quote it right, but I quote yeah. it. And, uh, I, but anyway, for we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, in other words, not only creation, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. Amen. Not only is man waiting for redemption, but, the, but creation, creation is, is awaiting redemption. Yes. And in a second, I'm going to go back to Genesis 3. But let me, let me just say this. In verse 23, when it says the redemption of our body, I, I, I wrote in my Bible, I don't know when I did this, but I wrote the word rapture mm -hmm. there. That's what it is. Because people need to realize this, the, the rapture is, is the redeeming of the body. Yes. Of everyone that has died mm -hmm. or happens to be yeah. still living at the time. The body doesn't get redeemed at the rapture, uh, uh, at, at salvation. salvation. It gets redeemed at the rapture. In other words, we don't live above sin. Right. I had a, an evangelist friend that used to preach about living above sin. They told the story when his, him and his wife first got married, they lived in an apartment above a honky-tonk. Oh. <laughs> and so, uh, but no, you're right. Yeah. I've got a lady named Caroline. She, she watches the show. I'm sure she's watching right now. And uh, I've talked to her on several occasions uh, for over an hour on the phone. I've sent her books. And Good. recently I sent her a CD called, What Would It Take to Lose Eternal Life? Yeah. I preached it a long time ago. It's an impossibility. Yeah, and uh, it is. And I show why. When, when yeah. they listen to the CD, they'll see, mm -hmm. you know, what it would take to lose eternal life. Uh, eternity yeah. couldn't be eternity if you could lose eternity. Right, right. Um, so I believe I've helped her. And, but the, the reason that people struggle is they hear preaching about, yeah. well, if you still do that, if you still drink, you're not, you didn't get what I got. You're not born again. And, no. you know, yeah. sins, well, people still sin. Well, First John, in his first letter, uh, chapter 1, he says twice in that little 14 verses, he says, if you say you're without sin, you're a liar. That's right. Yeah. And you make, yeah. And you make because, God a liar. And he's not yeah. talking to lost people. He's talking about saved right. people. And, and the same epistle says, he that sinneth knoweth not the Father. Yes. So, so. it almost sounds like a contradiction until you realize he that, sin, he that sinneth may, uh, knoweth not the Father. That's mm -hmm. talking about the new man. That's right. The new man that's saved cannot sin. No. Nope. The old man, the flesh, our, our emotions, our, our that's mind. Why, that's why in that first chapter, what it's really all about is, I believe it's like verse uh, 9, 10, and 11. It is God's way for a Christian who's gotten into sin to get right with God in full fellowship again. Yeah. That's what it's all about. Yeah. How to stay in full fellowship, but realizing you're living in a world and your flesh, you're going to have a battle and you're going to sin, and but this is how you get it corrected. Yeah. Because when I stand to the judgment seat of Christ, I could have all of that null and void if I go through God's plan. See, First John one nine is not to a lost person. That's no. not a salvation. It's for saved, for saved people. people. Absolutely. If we confess yeah. our sins, He's faithful yeah. and just Amen. to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from yeah. all unrighteousness. That's yeah. that's something about yeah. a saved person, right? Who's who's not right with the Lord, and Amen. you've got to confess. Uh, and, and confess simply means to agree with God at the same point in time 
on the same subject. Yeah. It's, a, it's not complicated. Yeah. And, it, and the Bible also, and as I told Miss Caroline, uh, and, she, and she said, the light, come on. She, she, you know, that made sense. Good. I said, I said throughout the Bible, we're told not to do this, not to do that. If you automatically lived perfect when you got saved, why all the admonitions That's in right. the Bible to don't and, do this, And don't why do would that? he say, do it not, if you didn't have the potentiality to do it? Uh, yeah, that's right. So, uh, no, we're not, this isn't an eternal security class today. Well, but, maybe, uh, it, maybe it has been but, for somebody. Uh, but, yeah. but you're right, these, these events that are taking place, huge storms that are sweeping down through cities. I mean, uh, yeah, and... And like this storm or the hurricane uh, yeah. that is now sweeping across uh, our Australia, um, the volcanic action everywhere. These are yeah. signs that we're getting into the latter days because the earth is groaning and travailing, waiting for its Why day. Why don't you find something in Matthew 24? Maybe, maybe get that passage ready while I go back to Genesis 3. I want to just <laughs> drive home what happened when man sinned in the garden. Because it wasn't just man that, 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 was, that was cursed here. I'm going to begin reading Genesis 3 um, in verse 14. But in verse 13 it says, The Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. <laughs> They're blaming each other. Adam blames Eve. Eve blames the serpent. Um, so verse 14, God deals with the serpent. And he said unto the serpent, which, which of course was indwelled by Satan, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast. Then in verse 15, I'll put enmity between thee and the woman, still talking about uh, the serpent, Satan, and between thy seed and her seed. Then in verse 16, unto the woman, now, he, now he's going to the, the woman here, I, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception, and sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, Thy desire shall be to thy husband. He shall rule over thee. And then he deals with Adam in verse 17. And he says unto Adam, he said, Behold, uh, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. And cursed is the ground for thy sake. And uh, talks about thorns and thistles and uh, uh, working with the sweat of thy face. So, so not only is the serpent and Eve and Adam under this curse, but uh, mm -hmm. the, the, the creation, the world is yeah. under this curse. Yes. Which is why one of the reasons, Doc, for the tribulation is to redeem the planet. Right. Get things ready. Christ's going to come back on the white horse and is going to uh, have everything ready to and, set up and, the kingdom. And people need to understand, why would, why would Jesus, who created it all, want to rule and reign over a world that is totally destroyed? Yeah. He's going to renew it. Yeah. And, uh, but here in, in Matthew, uh, he says, uh, let me find it again, this is not the Bible I normally use. And uh, he says, uh, nation uh, shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse pl places. And he said, all these are the beginning of sorrows, yeah. the beginning of those birth pain processes. Yeah. And, and with that, I mean, there's no doubt um, weather things and oh, yes. um, volcanic activity, which is related well, to earthquakes. Er earthquakes are, uh, they're all connected together. Yes. Yeah. And maybe in a sense, weather patterns are too. Well, weather patterns are affected uh, by all of this. And, uh, and, I know the people that are flat earth believers don't understand and don't believe in the circuitry of the movement of the what we call El Nino right now and all of that. Uh, but, uh, but the entire circle of the globe is, is affected constantly. This is how we get su uh, summer and winter and spring and fall. And this is how weather patterns change. And right now we're under what's called a super El Nino or a very strong one. And it appears that the weather has changed. But it's always done this. But now we're seeing, as these things change, we are seeing uh, more force with those changes. And so it's becoming more extreme. More extreme. Like the Bible talks about, yes. like a woman's birth pain. Yes, uh, in it pregnancy. is. 
I, the, I mean, the closer to the event, the more yeah. severe it gets. Well, there are there are volcanoes all over the world right now that are uh, that are inactive. I mean, uh, they're in action right now. We have some others that are looking like they're coming out of activity uh, after centuries of time. The world is setting itself up, Dan, for the last vial of wrath that God's going to pour out. Yeah. And that's going to be the greatest earthquake. You can see it in Revelation chapter 16, the last three verses. Uh, you're, you're going to see that the, the greatest earthquake the world has ever experienced is going to completely change the topography of planet Earth yeah. because the Creator's coming back to take over. And He is not going to take over and rule over a world that's in utter ruin. He's going to come in to a world that's been restored. Yeah. Ready or not, here I come. Amen. I got a, I've got a message on my, in my bookstore on my book table on that. Ready or not, here I come. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. <laughs> now we have a few. Uh, we got a little time left. Uh, we're simply saying 2024 has started out with a bang. It has. Uh, we're still, we're still. Ukraine's still happening. Israel's still fighting. And Gaza. That's and the world is turning more and more against Israel. Yeah. Yeah. So. This story actually come out yesterday. This this is brand yeah. new. The thing about right. cryptocurrencies yes. and the ETFs that they have approved. Mm -hmm. And I think you got yeah you got a you got a story of it right here because I've been watching. Yeah, it. I have played the market over there a little bit. Uh, That's why I put it at the top up there. It's a I, I'm or down at the bottom there. I highlight. I, I, I honestly, this is just another step for the one world order and their financial yeah. system. And they have approved uh, for for cryptocurrency to be on the, on the open on trading the, market, open, at least Bitcoin. That I don't know one, about all of them, but well, I don't know what that's called. But anyway, it's the first one, and you can bet there's a bunch more getting ready yeah, to go on it. Yeah, and, and what it's doing is it, it's it's setting the world up for electronic technology yeah. that eventually is going to govern all of your finances. And something like that's going to be used. Only it's going to be controllable. Yes. Bitcoin's not controllable. Well, they, one of the statements in that, if you had time to read it, we don't. But at the bottom, they said in the UK about this, they said that this is going to provide for the investor protection. What it says, folks, is this. They make you think you're getting what you want when in reality they're getting what they want. You got a story out of Canada. A Canadian yeah. Canadian police arrest a reporter for asking asking the, the prime minister a question. Yeah, sounds like America. It's sad, but um, we're, it, this is you where we're going. the election, and you're 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 you're, you're yeah. anti-government. Yeah, you're, you're anti-America. Yeah. And they're now getting ready to arrest people that were not even at at the J6 meeting. I, folks, you need to understand we're we're getting we're in the Antichrist kingdom. They just yeah. need to understand it. Yeah. And people needed to have realized three years ago when the man was, uh, mm -hmm. when he got, uh, became president, uh, the inauguration, yep. barbed wire around the Capitol. Yep. That's never happened before. Nope. That, that's shocking. I don't think people realize how big that is. Yep. We're about out of time. My yep. goodness. Yep. We had a couple other things here. Well, one but, of them uh, is Zelensky's asking for more money <laughs> while they have dug up a Jewish cemetery to build a condominium on. Folks, I'm telling you, it's a crooked, crooked world. Yeah, uh, he's one of the worst, most corrupt leaders yes. in the world. Yes, Mr. Uh, Zelensky, there. Yeah, we've been saying that for oh yes, a couple of years here on the program. <coughs> All right, excuse me. Uh, well, good seeing everybody. Good to have anybody listening in today on our uh, just letting you know what's going on this year, and more to come. So until then, keep your eyes on them skies.